it's, it doesn't matter who's, who it is. We have good quality players, good quality coaches. They're going to give the best in the nation a challenge each and every week. You talk about somebody who's fired up. I kind of went nuts up here, <laughs> but I saw my man Damian down on the side, on the field chest bumping players, and I know I could not feel like that or do that. That was amazing, my buddy. I'm telling you, man. I mean, the, atmos <laughs> the atmosphere on that sideline was nuts, dude. Nuts. I almost knocked the wind out of my chest with how many chest We have to know <laughs> this. We've talked all season about how cool and, co and collective that this coaching staff is on those final drives when nothing was going right defensively what was the demeanor down the sideline i mean it wasn't no panic you know you, you saw you know some looks of of confusion or frustration but at the same time it wasn't any panic i didn't see any guys pointing fingers which is a good sign of a good football team but you know whenever you jump out with a 30-point lead it's really hard to maintain that momentum of course you don't want to fall off like we did in this football game and have to win it at the end you know like we did, but it is really hard to sustain a, a 30 point, you know, yeah. lead in a football game and continue to encourage your guys to play at that level. Now, of course, championship teams should be able to do right. it. You know what I mean? So that's a part of growing as a team. That is a coaching point that he'll be able to make all week long is, hey, guys, we jump out like that. We have to sustain drives, defense. We have to keep them off the clock and we got to play a full game. Yeah. 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 How about this Swarm D? Now we were just talking about the takeaways for the Crimson Tide. Forcing two fumbles, three interceptions, including the game clincher by Xavier Brown. Hey, that's just playing at a high level. Anytime you have a defense that creates turnovers, that means guys know where, what they're doing and where they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? And that, that's just a sign of, you know, guys practicing at a high level and a defensive coordinator communicating to the group at a high level. Um, on the last drive, man, the, the freshman definitely stood up, dude. Yeah. You know, um, Kirby. I, I think he got in the huddle and said, throw the ball at the freshman. You know uh, I, I mean? definitely would have because you had a 6-3 receiver going no. against him, and you've won that jump ball all night long. No doubt about it. And I, I, I got a look of his face on the uh, jumbo the, the play before that um, that he barely missed. And I was like, man, this guy got a, you know, a look of confusion on his face, man. But, hey, he knew they was coming back to him, and he, he stayed there. And like I tell you, when you have the opportunity to be a hero, you can't, you can't miss that. You cannot miss it. Uh, Damien Square, how do you describe the play of freshman Ryan Williams? I mean, the plays that he made tonight when he had to make the plays was amazing, dude. Um, for that guy to be as young as he is, and I know we talk about this all the time, man, but, I mean, to be that young and to make the impact on this football team that he's made throughout these first four games is just big time. You know, we, we expected that guy to be a big time playmaker, but to show up in that moment of this football game, playing against Georgia, the number two team in the country, putting a team on your back, adjusting to the ball, and finding a way to get to get to the end zone? I mean, come on, man. Because, Tyler, it was a great throw from Milrow, but then Williams did so much after it, that. It was a catchable ball yeah. from Milrow. It was still a situation. Look, Georgia had to gamble. They, they knew they had to play man-to-man -man coverage. We, we stick Ryan Williams at the slot, which guarantees he's going against a safety. That's a mismatch in and of itself. He's so good off the line, he's able to close that gap and get even with that defender within 15 yards or so. So when the ball's in the air, that gives him an opportunity to extend it. He gets behind these defenders, and it was an underthrown ball, but it's a catchable ball. It's one that he can adjust to, but just his body control of being able to go. It's a lot like Devontae Smith going up, high-pointing the ball, and then what he's able to do, turning guys around afterwards. Look, and, and we were talking about this earlier on. When you have to make plays, you got to give your playmakers an opportunity. you got to throw a ball to them. They got away from that in the third quarter. But when it was crunch time, you go to number two. No doubt. Because he is the guy that can go up and make a play. No doubt about it. I mean, he, he just has that, that, that it factor to him. You know, it's not a lot of guys that – show up and, and can produce, you know, as well as that guy has, you know, at the beginning. But he does have an if factor similar to a few other guys that has walked, you know, this campus like Julio Jones, Mark Ingram, and guys like that, man. He's really special. He certainly is leading the way for the Crimson Tide. Six catches, 177 yards, and that one touchdown, the 75-yard strike that put Alabama in front, and the defense did the rest after that. An incredible victory for the Alabama Crimson Tide.